Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB test automation engineer certification. We are in chapter four talking about implementing test automation. And as a part of today's tutorial, we are stepping into the 4.3, the test automation solutions maintainability. And we'll be trying to understand here what are the steps important to take into account when talking about the maintenance of this task, which is test automation solution. In order to talk about the test maintenance or in fact the maintenance of the test automation solution, a very simple statement which we can very well understand as something which is created today requires a regular maintenance to make sure that it continues to work and gives you continuous benefits over a period of time. So it's not that simple to say that you can just create something for today's need and forget about what would happen in the future. We always consider a long-term goal about investing some money in anything. In fact, you can relate this to your house implementation that when you try to construct a house, you never construct it for one month, one month, one month to one year or something like that. You look forward to live your life in that particular house because you love it. And you try to consider every single thing what is required there to be taken care of. And at the same time, whenever the needs of the house comes to the maintenance, we do conduct it from time to time. And exactly the same way, the test automation solution would also demand the necessary maintenance steps. And in this particular tutorial, we'll try to understand how exactly we can increase the maintainability and what exactly are the various steps which can make my job easier to maintain an investing test automation solution. So to start with, of course, the very first thing we are talking about, the core competency and contributing element that is programming standards. So of course, maintainability is highly affected by the programming standards and the test automation engineers expectation of each other. A golden rule is to try following the clean code principles by Robert C. Martin. Briefly, clean code principles emphasize the following points. Of course, use a common naming convention for the classes, methods and variables for meaningful names. Use a logical and common project structure. Avoid hard coding. Avoid too many inputs parameters for the method. Avoid long and complex methods. Use logging. Use design patterns where they are beneficial and required. Focus on testability. At this point, all the points are very self-explanatory and there's no such point you would say that I'm kind of hearing this for the first time. Of course, each and every point is trying to direct only one thing that don't try to make things complicated. Don't try to make things complex, which are difficult to understand. Try to make it as simple as possible for someone to understand or you itself to understand after many years of time. And at the same time, try to use those patterns which are followed commonly across your organization, which would be easy to adapt or easy to follow at any point of time. And certainly the hard coding is not recommended here. So several points are basically contributing to help you understand the clean coding practices. I must remind you at this point of time, our automation scripts become pretty much similar and with those standards that the, what the development team follows. At any point, if you know what developers are taking care of in order to write their code, now this becomes one of our key practices when we become an automation test engineer. We need to pretty much stick to the same principles, same protocols of writing our automation scripts. And we must always see that we are not making it complex. Wherever you see it's becoming more complex, break it into multiple functions. So simplifying it is an art. So that's exactly where we see all these pointers, which starts right with the programming language itself, which contributes majorly to the automation solution. Additionally, to talk about, of course, we are talking about each of these pointers in a little more detail and trying to elaborate that how exactly this can happen in more details. So first of all, naming conventions are very helpful to identify the target of a given variable. Having understandable variable names such as login button, reset password button, helps test automation engineers to understand which component to use. Indeed, this is not just from the point of like making it relative with the keywords, which we give as a function name or class name in terms of automation. It is also to extend further that as, what if this automation engineer who wrote the script is no longer with the organization? Then someone else can take over it easily by following the similar rules of the naming conventions. Secondary, it might be possible for the same engineer who, when they look forward to update the script after many days. For example, maybe after one year, 
as I might be engaged with so many other commitments and so many other assignments, after a year, it is not easy for me to recall that what exactly I would have done there. So it might be other other benefit of having naming conventions being followed to make sure that I myself can edit and update my own code. So having a format of using standard naming conventions could be of great help. The second important thing we are talking about is of course hard coding, which is the process of embedding values in the software without the ability to change them directly. It can be avoided by using data-driven testing so that the test data comes from a common source that can be maintained more easily. Also hard coding reduces development time but it is not recommended to use as data can change frequently, which can be time consuming to maintain. Using constraints for those variables that are not expected to change frequently is also advised. By doing so, the sources and the places that need to be maintained can be reduced. In simple words, hard coding is writing the code in a way that it can be executed easily for a particular test, but when requiring to use it for other options or other tests, other scenarios, it may not be useful at all. Hard coding makes you limited to a particular scenario. But here the hard coding can be referred to a particular variable or particular parameter which is passing a value to the uh, SUT. So say for example, if I want to key in the username and password for a particular login page, then it is important for me to instead of hard coding the values of username and password, instead use a parameter which can be related to an Excel sheet or maybe XML values like XML variables or maybe some other options which might be pretty much dynamic and I can always replace the sheet and pass on another set of data when required to reuse this particular test. So yes, indeed making it parameterized which is to basically to do the data driven, data driven testing makes my job easier for reusability and that's where the maintainability also becomes simpler and easier to update them as the time requires it. Further to add here, of course, we are talking about the next one is leveraging the design pattern, which is also highly recommended. We discussed this on, in our previous chapter, that is the last segment of the, the chapter three, which enables a structured and properly maintainable test automation code to be implemented as long as the design patterns are used properly. So they certainly make a lot of sense to us that having design pattern being implemented will make my test more structured and easy to understand in turn makes it more maintainable when the time comes to update them with any kind of replaceability. The next thing we are talking about here is of course to ensure the high quality of the test automation code. It is recommended to make use of static analyzers. Code formatters like those commonly used in IDE will improve the readability of the test automation code, which is certainly one of the common things. In fact, things like syntax check are one of the common things which we do here as well. And the number of code written in a particular class could be another element. Similarly, we can talk about the commenting, amount of comments used in the scripting is equally important because sometimes we may feel that why should I write a comment above the script or at the end of the script or maybe next to a particular line. The answer is it helps me recall or help me understand or someone else understand that what this particular piece of code is doing here, right? So that's where commenting equally would matter when we talk about such analyzers. And by doing static analysis, these kind of coding anomalies can be easily identified without executing them. So this could be good pre-check before we ship the solution for any kind of executions. The next important thing here is apart from the clean code principles, it is also recommended to use the agreed branching structure and strategy in version control using different branches for the features, releases, and defect fixes is helpful in understanding the branch context. It is certainly important for us to understand the DevOps and you know the branching of the code because when we try to do anything new, we don't want to hamper the existing. The only reason why we do this branching is to safeguard our existing piece of work. And as we do any kind of stunts on these branches, if they succeed in their implementation, we can later merge them to the main branch. But of course, we can start with the uh, feature branch to do any kind of activities and then later on success, we can relate it to the release branches. So creating branches would be another good practice other than the clean code, which would make a lot of support to make your code maintainable. So put together, these are all those factors which I can take into account when it comes to maintainability of the automation scripts 
as a part of the test automation solution because the solutions are not done just for once. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning. Thank you.